if you watch worship videos online, you'd be forgiven for thinking that every church has a wealth of guitars, drums, keyboards, an army of backing vocalists and other musicians filling the stage. Now, from working in many local churches, we know that this is not often the case. We sometimes meet worship leaders who feel as though their church is somehow inadequate because they don't have all the musicians they would like. But remember Paul's encouragement to the Corinthians that each person in the church is an important part of the body of Christ. He says that when God has given gifts, he distributes them to each one just as he determines. That means you have what you need in your church. And ultimately, Jesus is the one leading you to worship the Father by the Spirit. And he has given you the people you need to partner with him in that. The key is to value what you've been given and make the best use of whatever instruments and singers you have. In this session, we'll be looking at some skills and principles for arranging songs and working together as a music group, however small or large that group might be. Firstly, consider the role that each instrument can play in your sound. Some of us are used to playing on our own. If you are the only instrument, you are 100% of the sound. So you need to cover all the different aspects of the arrangement. But if you're playing with another instrument, you're then making up 50% of the overall sound. If there are five instruments in your music group, suddenly you can take up just 20% of the instrumental space. The more people you play with, the more you need to consider your role in the sound. If you keep playing 100% on your own instrument, you'll be competing with the rest of the group and creating a muddy sound rather than working together as a team. As a guitarist, sound can play very percussively. This works well if he's on his own. But if we have a drummer or a percussionist, then a lot of the beat will be taken up by them. So he will need to play in a smoother way. Pianist may be used to filling all the parts of the sound, the tune, the rhythm, the middle harmony and the low bass line. This is what happens if you play the piano reduction found in most worship songbooks. But if you have a bass guitar, then actually the bass should be the main instrument covering the bass frequencies. So perhaps the piano can do something else, um, just right hand or pads or lead lines. But then if we add a melody line instrument like a flute or a violin, maybe the lead line on the keys should be played by them instead. The point is that the more instruments you add, the more each person needs to work out how to find their space in the arrangement, not trampling other people's musical space. Yeah. On the screen are some guidelines to the roles different instruments can play in a band. Pause this video and discuss or reflect on how this might apply in your context. Talk about the instruments you have and how you might grow in playing together. Next, consider the dynamics of a song and how to create shape as the song progresses. We've talked in previous sessions about the journey of a service, but even within one song, you can go on a journey. Shaping the song can highlight the flow of the lyrics and guide the congregation into different responses to God. There are essentially two ways to create dynamics. The first is to add and subtract the number of instruments that are playing. Listen to the words of the risen Christ. Peace be with you. Come and see his hands and the wound in his side. 
So a quiet song may begin with just a piano and a melody line instrument later adding the guitar in verse two and then bringing in percussion, bass or harmony vocals in the chorus. A second way to approach dynamics is to have all the instruments playing together, but change the intensity and feel of what is being played. So the introduction to a loud song might begin with all the instruments playing together. From life's beginning to they could do so with a lot of energy and rhythm. But then the intensity might drop to create more space as you begin to sing verse one. This can be achieved by keyboard players holding block chords, guitarists picking an arpeggio, and the drummer playing a sparser beat. The dynamic journey you go on will often be determined by two things, the song's lyrics and the kind of response you're expecting from the congregation. For example, a hymn might begin with a bold declaration about who God is, which you can support with a louder, more confident sound. But the lyrics of a later verse might speak of the agony of the cross. So you might make the music sound softer or even more discordant to draw attention to this and help the congregation respond from their hearts. So talk together as a music group about the journey of dynamics and feel you want in each song. Suggest ideas for how a song can build or fade and try things out in your rehearsals to grow in this way. I don't know anything about flying an aeroplane, really. But the impression I get is that the takeoff and the landing are the bits where the pilot has to take most care. In general, the autopilot seems to handle the bits in between. I think it's similar with arranging songs. Getting the introduction and the ending right is often a key part to the preparation. The intro is key to setting the mood of the song. What feeling do you want to convey? Is this a regal, glorious celebration of our God the King? Or is it a fun, energetic shout of praise? Or a quiet, reflective song of drawing near to God? Or maybe a mysterious, challenging lyric about God who's holy and other? Musical introductions can paint all of these ideas. The intro is also the moment to establish the tempo and the key. Avoid ambiguity at this stage, otherwise the congregation might feel insecure about how to start singing. In terms of endings, think through how you want people to conclude this song. Will you repeat the last line for emphasis or drop all the instruments to sing the last chorus with just the voices? Also consider what's coming next in the service. Are you going to flow seamlessly into the next song? Uh, or pause on a couple of chords and invite people to pray, or maybe slow down to quiet stop and allow a time of silence. All these factors will impact how you choose to end the song. Yeah, let's give God a round of applause. There are aspects of a musical arrangement which can be discussed beforehand and even written down. But there's also great value in developing visual signals so that the band is able to communicate during the song. This saves time in rehearsals and allows you to be more spontaneous during the actual service. Now make sure you agree your signals beforehand. I remember playing electric guitar for someone and they wave their hand towards me like this which I thought meant to play quieter, but they were actually asking me to play a confident, loud lead melody. So make sure that you know what your signals mean. If you sing without an instrument, then your hands are free to make all kinds of signals. Some people will indicate verse numbers, chorus and bridge like this, and repeat like this. 
Keyboard players can often afford to lift off their left hand to make signals. But as a guitar player, I mostly have to rely on head nodding and shrugging. So my signals usually are to shake my head to indicate that we're coming to a stop, to nod my head to indicate that I want to keep going or repeat, and I'll lift my guitar neck uh, to indicate a stop and bring it down to show the final beat. I will also point to an instrument if I want them to play on their own, or occasionally do a kind of Kermit the Frog hand to indicate just vocals. Signals like this require all the band members to have good sight lines with each other, to keep their eyes open and their heads up. Get used to this in your rehearsal times so you're ready to follow one another during the service. There are also some situations where the band leader or musical director is not the same person as the lead singer. Sarah and I sometimes work like this. I'll lead the band, she'll take the role of the worship leader. So in this situation, we need to communicate well I'll keep my eyes on her and then communicate what I think she's saying to the rest of the band. You can experiment with this kind of thing in your setting. As this video comes to an end, pause and reflect as a group on these questions. What aspects of your musical arrangements could you develop as a team? And do you have agreed visual signals? How could you use these more effectively? Let's draw our thoughts together in this prayer. The Psalms tell us to play skillfully and shout for joy. Help us, God, to develop our musical skills, to honour you and inspire joyful worship. Amen.